Um, I'm going to give you a talk, an overview of what, Fedora, what Koji is. It's the build system that Fedora uses, how it works, and how you can use it to um, build your own software. So what is Koji? Koji is a task scheduler, a results gatherer. It's the, been the Fedora build system since the core and extras merge. And it's also used internally inside of Red Hat to build Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's all, there's a whole bunch of other you know, companies and people that are using it to build their own software today. Um, so it, it, it schedules tasks based on a priority um, system that's built in internally. So when you submit something to happen, it ha you know, magically happens. It tracks the results. So when you build an RPM, it tracks what came out of the RP you know, what came out of that build. It also tracks what went into it, so what software you used to build, you know, build your software on. It's quite a you know, convenient and powerful tool. What Koji is not. It's not a software release lifecycle management tool. It's not a deployment tool. It's not a repository management tool. And it's not a continuous integration tool. So I don't know if any of you have used Hudson or something like that so that every time you commit, it builds a new version and sees if you've broken the world or not. You can't do that with Koji. Well, you, you, you could using the API, but it doesn't have that built into it. It's not something that you know, by default is going to you know, do your continuous integration. You can pull repositories out of it, but Koji by itself doesn't make repositories. There's you know, deployment tools like Puppet and uh, you know, other tools to deploy your software. And you can use you know, external software to Koji to manage the lifecycle, but it's not a built-in part. So the design goals with Koji. The main one was be build reproducibility. If we built this software today, and six months from now we're trying to debug a problem with it, and we want, you know, we want to know exactly how did we build it? What did we build it against? You know, so that you can reproduce that environment to you know, work out you know, what the problem is to debug the issue. Um, and it you know, heavily uses existing components. It uses mock, yum, RPM build, create repo, you know, all open source tools that are out there under the hood to you know, do its job. So what mock? Mock is a tool that it creates a cheroot and executes commands in the cheroot. So Koji takes advantage of mock. It builds its source RPMs. It builds its binary RPMs inside of mock cheroots. Um, some, you can you know, execute commands privileged or not. Um, the out, you know, we copy the output out, um, which we then upload to the server. So mock ensures that you've got a reproducible environment. It installs whatever's in the repo that it's configured, and we have what's the, called the build group, and that tells, you know, mock, these are the things you put in first. And then we look at this um, build requires of a spec file, and we install all of those things. So when we've installed all of that, you know, the package should be able to build. So it's always building against the most minimal amount of things needed to build. And unless you, know, you configure your build group to have the world and then you're not really going to know what is actually needed to build your software or not, but it will build. And it uses mum, yum in the back end to, to um, create the cheroots. So what is yum? Yum is a um, software installation tool. It reads repository metadata and installs you know, packages based on that, resolving dependencies as it goes. It's a you know, pretty simple but powerful tool that probably anyone that's used RPM or used you know, Fedora rail-based system has you know, complained about it being slow or messy or whatever, but it is a you know, powerful and complex tool. We then use RPM build. You know, everybody first learned how to build a, you know, an RPM by doing RPM build minus BA or minus minus rebuild and build it. It uses RPM build to you know, create your binary RPMs. 
RPM build converts the bare components, you know, the spec file, which is your recipe. It tells you what you need to install to, um, you know, to ha what you need to have installed to be built against, how to build it, what commands you need to run to build it, what you should get out of it at the end. You know, the, in the um, source RPM, we have the spec file, the upstream table, patches. We end up with a you know, source RPM and a binary RPM. So Koji itself has a bunch of components. I actually don't have them all here, but these are the ones that deal with the RPM building. We have Koji Hub, which is the central brains. Koji Ra, which is a repo administrator. Koji D, which does the building. Koji Web is a front end, and the Koji command line. So Koji Hub, it uses XML RPC for all of its inter, you know, communications. It's a passive application. By itself, you can set up Koji, the, you know, the hub, and it's not going to do anything. It doesn't, it, you know, runs as mud Python. It's not active in any way, shape, or form. It's entirely passive. It is also the brains of the operation. It tells you, you know, what you can and can't do. It tells you, um, you know, it, can, it does all of the writing to the file system. It does all the communications to the Postgres database that's in the back end. Um, and, you know, it has all the brains as to which task is the next one to be, um, you know, run, which machine should that task be run on. You know, you don't want a PPC build to end up on an x86-64 builder. It's just not going to work. Koji Ra manages the repositories that are used internally inside of um, uh, Koji. So it watches the tags and then sees when you know, you've built something, it's landed in a tag that feeds a builder and goes, okay, we need to build a new repository and creates you know, one with the latest in the tags. Koji D is generally the thing that is the most active. It runs mock creates the source RPMs, it creates the binary RPMs, it does runs create repo to create the new, to actually generate the repositories, it pulls the hub for new tasks to, it, it keeps the brains, you know, in Koji Hub to actually, you know, run and do their thing and keep, you know, keep moving along. It, yeah. Koji Web gives you a visual, um, status of what's going on. You, know, you can look at Koji Web, you can see, oh yeah, my build's running, or you can look up build logs so that, you know, you did a build of GCC last week and oh, it failed and I forgot to do anything about it. You can go back and, you know, grab the build logs and, you know, check, you know, what was going on. It gives you a method to sign up for notifications of builds. The notifications inside of Koji itself are pretty simplistic, but you can, you know, say, I want to know every single time that a tag happens or a build happens or just this particular package. It, it, it's a rudimentary. It also allows you to cancel resubmit tasks. The CLI is the most, is a much more powerful way to interact with Koji. It lets you create users, it lets you submit tasks, and the tasks being either, you know, regenerate a repository, um, submit a build, um, you can do, you know, a scratch build or you want to move a package from one tag to another tag, um, manages permissions, allows you to add tags, manage the tags and targets, change, you know, their names or, you know, in the, where things end up. And there's a bunch of tools that use Koji that let you do some other things like MASH is a repository generation tool. Sigil is a tool for, you know, signing your RPMs. But uh, is a package manage life cycle management tool, allows you to transition your know, packages through states of testing and, you know, going to stable and all that kind of stuff. And then package database, which manages the package list and who's the person that's responsible for that package. Koji is also capable of doing other types of tasks and builds other than just building RPMs. You can create live CDs, which is uh, you know, something for Fedora 15 with the release and release engineering. We're going to create all of our live CDs and appliances inside of Koji. Um, you can create Windows builds, which is not something Fedora is going to ever do. And you can also do native Maven builds. Um, 
So you, it, it creates a Linux cheroot and uses Maven to you know, pull in all the jars and stuff from a Maven repository and build you know, your Java Mavenized product and spits out wars and EARs and jars and all the POMs and all the stuff that goes with you know, the Java world. And then it also optionally converts those into RPMs that you can then use in you know, regular RPM builds. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing for the, you know, the Java world. They like to ship things a bit different because they want it to run everywhere and don't so much care about you know, packaging for one distribution and the other distribution and whatnot. So inside Koji, it organizes things by tags and targets. Um, the tags are a collection of things, you know, pack, generally package names. So you have, uh, and optionally, you know, architectures. So we build, um, like in Fedora, we build all of our RPMs into a target, which says we're going to use, you know, for, for, for what's Rawhide now, we use disk-f15 as our target. And it builds things using the um, tag that is defined for that target, which is disk-f15-build, which has the group metadata and all of the packages that are available to it. And then at the end of it, it puts it into a destination tag. So we tag the package into disk-f15, which is through inheritance, which I'll show you a bit later on. I've got a demo that will hopefully work. Um, it puts it into the destination tag and makes it, then you know, Kojira looks at that and goes, oh, we've got this new package now that's in distf 15 we need to make a new repository that includes that new package. So, it, you know, we, and you know, tags have an inheritance, so you can say distf 15 inherits from distf 14 updates, which inherits from distf 14 which inherits from distf 13 updates, and so on, and goes down so that, you know, you're not starting from scratch for every single time, you know, you're building a new release. Um, yeah. Tags. We, we so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the tags will inherit, inherit from each other. Feel free to ask questions at any time because I don't like talking all the time. Um, so, the, yeah, the tags can inherit from each other so that if you just, say, if you've only built a package for Fedora 13, we use the tag inheritance to make that package available for Fedora 14 and you know, Fedora 15 as well. So instead of having to build it for all of them, you can use the tag inheritance, build it for the lowest common denominator, and it then you know, populates through the inheritance to be available in all the other ones that are built upon it. One thing that tends to catch people up a little bit is that all the RPMs have to be unique entirely in the NVRA. So it's the name, release, version, and architecture. So you can have, for instance, three different source RPMs called Foo, Bar, and Baz that each spit out a RPM called Foo-1.1-1 but each one has a different architecture. So three different source RPMs can build a binary RPM that has the same name and it's available for all of them but for a different architecture. But you can't ha have say two RPMs that provide the same thing so say, um, say glibc, you can't have two you know, source RPMs, so say GCC decided it was going to bundle glibc in and make a sub package called glibc dash whatever, and you can't have two source RPMs providing the same binary RPM by the same name. Um, it, it catches people up because they, they're like, you know, the, the source RPM is unique, but every single RPM has to have a unique, you know, NVRA, so you, you know, you can use epochs and things to make, um, you know, to drop back versions and stuff, and it actually doesn't take that into consideration, so if you use an epoch to rebuild an old version, you actually have to do something to make it uh, unique you know, in another way to have the build complete. 
another thing while I'm wearing here that Koji has this, it makes the repositories from what it calls the latest package. And the latest package, uh, most people tend to think of as, well, what has the highest NVR? You know, which, which is the highest NVR package? So if you build, um, you know, glibc 2.1.0, and then you go and build glibc 2.0.9. So it's, a, it's an older NVR. In Koji terms, that older one will be the latest package because it was the most recently tagged package. And that tends to catch people up. They're like, well, I've built this newer version. Why isn't it available in my build route? And that's just because it goes based on the latest tag package, which allows you to drop back to old versions and you know, do some things. Otherwise, if we just put, and we only have in the repositories the latest version of each package, so you can't just have, you know, a hundred different versions of, you know, GCC and you get to pick in your spec file which one you want. It, you know, it does not allow you to do that, but you could do that via having a bunch of different tags that each had a different GCC version and would let you build, you know, that way. So Koji tags inherit from other tags. They define which architectures you want to build for. So in your one you know, Koji hub, you, so you might have um, you know, 50 tags, and you have builders that do you know, i686 only. They're 32-bit you know, machines, and you've got other 64-bit machines, and you have some titanium. You can use different tags to build to different architectures. Um, and it tells you, you know, where to build in. Targets, I kind of went over a little bit. Uh, the, what you use when you submit your build. So you say that you, you build to the target and it defines what's used to populate and where to go at the end. So building your own software using Koji. The simplest path is to use external repositories just in that if you use the internal repositories, say if you wanted to build for Fedora 14 or RHEL or whatever, if you don't use external repositories, you need to import it and then you need to continuously import the updates and keep that, you know, keep that updated and manage yourself. Using external repositories, you can just point it at a mirror and whenever there's an update available, it'll get picked up and available for you to build against. You can only use a single mirror, so while YUM supports using mirror lists, and you can, you know, like by default, a Fedora box is configured to use a mirror list. It talks to the server and says, give me all the mirrors that are available. You get a big list back, and then if downloading fails, it jumps to the next one and continues on, and you're know, always happy. With Koji, you can't use mirror lists. You have to point it at a single mirror. Um, it doesn't have that ability to, you know, jump for, jump through the different um, mirrors. And if you wanted to build Mandriva or SUSE or some other distribution, you'd need to build the supporting tools. So you'd need to build like YAM or Mark and, Mark and whatever tools are, you know, the underlying core components, if they're not available for your distribution, you'd need to build them to do that. So we're gonna do a demo now. So I set up last night a little VM and I have a Koji instance that I configured on it and right now we have no packages configured, no tags configured, you know, we've not done tasks, we don't have any, you know, build targets. We have a single host that can build i386, well, the base architecture is i386 and x86-64. And we have a couple of users, the admin user and Kojira, which is the user that Kojira uses. So, I came up with this. I, I mirrored Fedora 14 and onto the, onto the VM. So I'm just gonna go through some steps and feel free to ask questions if you, know, you, you want. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. So I just you know put in a little file the steps we're gonna do. So we're gonna add a tag here. Yeah. 
So we added a tag, Fedora 14 base, and now I can't see my mouse. <laughs> there it is. So let's add another tag here for Fedora 14 add-ons. We're going to add another tag for Fedora 14 add-ons, and we're going to tell it that its parent is Fedora 14 add-ons. So then if we go back to our little tags page here, we now see the few different tags. And if we go to Fedora 14 add-ons testing, you can see through it shows the inheritance and says, oh, we've got the add-ons as a parent. How's the user configured? Can you configure that through Elda? It uses the, keeps the users in the database. Um, it does have, so Koji for authentication will use either Kerberos or um, SSL certificates. I, this particular instance I'm using um, password authentication, but it's not recommended for use that sends the password in clear text and you gotta put the password on the command line. I've actually aliased Koji to Koji dash dash user admin dash dash password password, cause you know, it's just, just as an, for a demonstration. But um, so if you use LDAP for your users, if you're using Active Directory, you should be able to use the Kerber side of it to do the authentication. Um, but it's, uh, it, it keeps its users internally in the Postgres database and it doesn't really have any ties into like being able to use LDAP or something like that. So now we've got this. Yeah. It goes over the screen. Let me just make it a little smaller. So we'll add another tag. Yeah, yeah I do too. Good catch. So th in this tag here, we're saying the parent is the add-ons, and we have we're defined because this is the t you don't have to define architectures on every tag, but you do have to define it on the tags that you're going to use to build against. It needs to know what architectures we're going to build for. So in this instance, we're going to build i686 RPMs and x8664 RPMs, and then we will add tag inheritance with a lower pro uh, what do I do here? Yeah, good job. That's what I'm teaching me for running it last sec. Um, so we added the tag inheritance and put it, gave it a, the first time you add a tag, as in the inheritance change, it assumes a priority of zero. And if you just tried to add it without defining the priority as a second tag in the inheritance chain, it will throw an error saying, oh, we've already got one. Um, so you need to define a priority for the second tag. So if we now look at the build tag in our web interface, we have the add-ons and we have the base. So then we're going to add an external repository, which is mirrored on the VM. Hopefully I got the spelling right here. So we're adding the external repository. We're defining here the minus T to add it to this tag. We're going to call the external repository Fedora 14. We have a URL that is available via the Apache server on the VM. 
So it's created the external repository and it's added it to the tag. Uh, so now, the, the, if we refresh here, it shows up external repository, Fedora 14. It's inherited from the tag that it comes from. So we now add a build group because whenever Koji tries to do any builds, it pulls from the build group and it creates a comps file and it uses a build group to populate the initial. Yeah. I failed miserably here. I'm sorry about that. Probably should. <laughs> So now we have, um, we've added the group and I grabbed the package list here that, so the next command is add the group packages for this tag. This is the group and this is the list of packages we're going to add. I grabbed that list of packages from the Fedora 14, uh, from the Fedora 14 build tag on the Fedora's Koji. That's the, you know, the packages that are defined as the minimal build root in Fedora. So they're ones that you don't need to you know, add as build requires because you can guarantee that they're always going to be available. So I've added that group. So if we go, you know, Koji list group. list groups. So now lists, you know, the groups where they're added tells us, you know, the package. Um, so now we're going to add a target. And adding the target, we add the target, we say here this is our target name, this is where we populate the build root from, and this is where we're going to have the packages that we build end up in, you know, this is where we want to tag them when the build completes. So now that we've added that um, target here, we should have a task, hopefully, Koji Rush should be, uh, Should have checked to make sure Koji R is running. No, it's not. So it helps when it's running. Koji D is probably not running either. No. So now we've got a new repo task because Koji R has gone. Oh, we've got a target. So now we need a repo for it. And it said, let's make a new repo task. Koji D is then gone, oh, we've got a new task, and it's now doing its thing to run these two create repo jobs. And so we want to add a couple of packages. So we're adding a package. We're saying that you have to define an owner of a package when you add it. So we're saying that the admin is the owner because it's the only user that we can actually use. Um, the way, this is the, ta the tag where we're adding the package and then it's available to all the tags that inherit from you know, that tag and we're going to add bash and bin utils and so they're added so now if we go to packages we see the two packages you know click on it and it says it's you know in this tag we've got no builds um, yeah. get the whole page in. Um, so now what I want to do is wait while it runs create repo. So the create repo task, what it is actually doing is it gets the list of all the packages that are in the tag and gets the latest version and populates a list and then creates a re repository from that 
And this is where we've got this external repo as well. So it grabs the repository metadata from the external repository and then merges the two together to give you a single repository that is referenced in um, the code, you know, the, the um, mock configs that Koji builds. It's running on a VM on my laptop. No, it's it's a Fedora 14 VM on my laptop that I threw together yesterday, and you know, it took me about 20 minutes or so to set it up. But I've done you know done it a whole bunch of times. The first time it usually takes a while to get all the t you know the how it works and what it does, and you know get it all going. And once you know you understand it, it's pretty simple to you know set up a new Koji. You could you could run it without. Yeah, I could have just installed it on my laptop and done it. I just did it on the virtual machine so that when it's done, I can d delete the LVM partition and it's gone and cleaned up. That, that's the only reason I ran it on the, as a VM. But it could have just been on the machine. If you want to build uh, packages for the day, would you do it this way or would you uh, run it on a virtual If you're going to build packages for Fedora, what you would do is you go through the process of becoming a Fedora package maintainer, and you do the, you know, the development work locally, and then you submit the build to the um, Koji build system that Fedora runs, and it goes through there. Yep. There is patches around that cross that will cross compile, but they won't ever be accepted upstream. Um, the goal of doing you know, Koji, using Koji and having the reproducibility is also kind of mandating native compilation. So if you, like Mock uses yum to populate the Chirut, so if you wanted to cr say cross compile ARM on x86-64, you don't really have any way to run the postscripts in the RPMs and you don't get the environment set up exactly how it's intended. So you can use a VM for it. You could run Koji D inside of a VM that's an ARM VM and on an x86-64 box, but it's the way that you know we've developed it all is to do native compilation. Yep. Will it at least do 32-bit builds on a 64-bit box? It will do 32-bit builds on a 64-bit box. You can build any compatible architecture. So if you got the builders in Fedora are all x86-64 boxes or um, PowerPC-64 boxes, and they build 32 and 64-bit packages. It's, as long as the machine is capable of natively running the code, it will do the builds and that architecture. So, so builds are done in a root, root, and how well pronounce it, over the VM. Correct. They're done in a chirut on the build host, and each build is done in a brand new chirut. So we're getting there. Looks like we're probably. Yep. So we have some repositories created now. So I have a couple of source RPMs here. So we'll go Koji build. We're going to send it to our target, which was this. And let's build bash. So it uploads the source RPM. Um, by default, administrators are allowed to build source RPMs, and everybody else has to build from SEM checkouts. That's configurable. Um, you know how you want to do that. You can even force it so that everybody has to build from a, a, you know, source configuration management checkout. So we can see here that it's, we've got this task. We're watching the task. We've created the new build. We're going to build it for i686 and x86-64. It's now been picked up by the host. So you can watch on the command line if you want. You can also go to your tasks here so we can see you know, the task. And so it's now going through the, you know, we have all our logs. It's going through. If we click on watch logs, loads logs, it's installing the, um, it's installed the packages in 
that, are defi that we defined in the build group plus their dependencies. It then installs the, um, once they're installed, it then installs the source RPM and rebuilds it natively on the architecture to make sure that any um, architecture specific build dependencies are picked up correctly. You know, if, the, if you put an if arc, you know, S390X and add a build requires specifically for that architecture in the spec file. And. What? No, it, it just builds from, well, from spec files or source RPMs. So um, the way that Fedora builds, we have a command, a utility called Fed Package, which is a tool that interacts with the Fedora revision control system, the Git tree that we, the Git um, repositories that we use for each package. It hosts the spec file and um, you know the patches, and then we put the tarballs in a lookaside cache. And the build SCM, uh, build source RPM task, it does a git checkout because you tell it, I want to do this build from this git repository and this git hash. It does a checkout, gets the right hash that you want. And it then does a fed package sources, it runs, which is a, a configurable command. So you could configure it to you know, run a command to say, you know, make tarball or whatever, whatever command you need to run to get a tarball of your source. Um, so fed package sources, you know, then downloads the tarball from the lookaside cache. It makes the, it finds the um, spec file that's in the repository, in the git repository, and does an RPM build minus BS and builds a source and um, creates, you know, the source RPM that it then feeds into the build tasks. So, you know, if you wanted to build, you know, from a SCM, we, CVS is supported, um, Subversion, Git, Mercurial, uh, the supported SCMs, and there's some patches floating around for Perforce and a couple of other proprietary ones. Um, you can, you can, you know, do that, and then you can define a command that you need to run to create your tarball so that you can make your SRPM. Correct. So you just ask to, um, if you know, we first create this SRPM and then we use that to create the um, you know, binary packages. So it looks like we're still actually installing. So it's still running here. We'll just cancel running and run top. Can I just ask Okay. Yep. Is that not part of Koji itself? No. Um, so Fedora uses a tool called Bodai for its software management release. So when you build a package, you create an update in Bodai, and Bodai then manages the package through you know different tags. So we have a you know updates candidate tag. And then we have an updates testing tag, and then the updates tag. So when when a when you you know do a package build for an update, it gets tagged into the updates candidate tag, and then you create the update in Bodai, and Bodai then goes through that and says, okay, we're pushing updates. Package has been signed. It then moves the package from the updates candidate tag to the updates testing tag, and then. We create a repository from the updates testing tag, push that out for testing. Then when testers test it, they can give karma in Bodai, and when it gets enough karma, it then goes to updates and becomes a stable update. Yep? Um, how much does it support uh, cross-compiling between releases? I mean, can you build your rel 6, rel 3, your rel 4 on your rel 5 build box? As long as the RPM on the build box is able is capable of installing the RPMs. You can build for different releases. So um, Fedora builders right now run RHEL 6 because Fedora 14 and newer requires a 2.6.32 kernel. We've optimized glibc to be on a 2.6.32 or newer kernel. Um, so the builders are running that, and that RPM supports all the SRPMs all the way back. 
but the, we had did RPM changes in Fedora 10, which meant that the RPM on RHEL 5 was no longer capable of reading, you know, being able to install the RPMs into the Chirrut, because the host um, YAM and RPM is what installs the packages into the Chirrut. It, it's not using, you know, the targets. Um, so we had to then build a new RPM that we put on all the builders that you know, supported the newer features, and we ran them on RHEL 5 until we got to the point where we you know, had RHEL 6 available and we moved the builders to that. So as long as the host's RPM is capable of reading the RPMs and installing them, you can you know, cross-compile. So the builders in Red Hat run RHEL 5 and they build all the packages all the way back as far as you know, we support them. But that goes as far as you be, being able to do builds on, say, a Ubuntu machine because you can just install log and up and, and on the RPM on the Ubuntu machine and, and Correct. do builds and stuff. It, so it's not tied to any particular error. Yeah. So y you could use, um, you know, Ubuntu, you could run all Koji on Ubuntu and build all of your RPMs on Ubuntu and it's going to work just fine. The We don't support, currently support building DEBs, but there's no reason that if, you know, there's a, a Debian equivalent of Mock was available and a little bit of porting a Koji D, that you couldn't build, you know, dot .debs as well. It's just not something that, you know, we do and no one in the community stepped up and said, hey, I really want to use Koji to build my DEBs. Here's a patch that does it. So if somebody wanted to do that, I'm pretty sure we would accept it. What's this, sir? You could build. You could build Mandriva packages or SUSE packages. You would need to, you know, make sure that, um, you know, you had a. If you used an external repository, you'd need a YUM external repository, and, um, you know, we we don't support the native tools, but you know that could maybe even be done as well. So let's see where our build's at. So it's done, so let's go to all tasks. And our build failed for some reason. Okay. It's fail it failed because it reads in from the external repository metadata and says, hey, we've got this um, RPM already because we keep track of, even if it comes from an external repository, we keep track of all of them in there. And it's saying we already have this package in there for some reason. I think it was actually in the external. Uh, I was in the external saying the f version of Fedora release was different between, I guess, between the, I, the 32 and 64 bit, which it shouldn't have been. So. I'll try bin utils, but I have a feeling that something in my rush to set it up is not quite exactly right with the repository that I'm using. Yep. Okay. No. Uh, I mean, this, the Koji it started life originally as the internal um, Red Hat build system, and when we got to the point where we're merging Fedora, um, core, the core and the extras together, and making everything available externally for you know, anyone to contribute to, Plague, the build system that was used by Fedora extras, wasn't quite up to what we needed from a build system you know, to do, to do it all. And at that point, Red Hat open sourced, you know, Koji and released it and made it available under, you know, the GPL for everybody. Um, we're we're uh, introducing Koji in Yeah. And, uh, the one thing that there's a few kind of uh, problems to solve, one of which being the uh, uh, authenticating users. Yep. Okay. Is there, uh, I'm just, if we can, if we can somehow get things to 
together, mm -hmm. uh, it would be great. I mean, is there any way, uh, any, what are the options for uh, authenticating people to uh, packages? Right. So at the moment, the options are um, SSL certificate, Kerberos, or username password. The username password is very insecure. Um, but there's no, Koji Hub supports plugins, so you could quite easily write some kind of a, you know, authentication plugin that would talk to the LDAP server. It's just not something that we've had to do, so yeah, we haven't. No one's, no one's done that yet. Yeah. But, you know, if you're using, like, Active Directory, it has Kerberos, and you could use that. Okay, so a build um, gets permanently stored in the database. So at the end of a build, when you do an actual build, it's in the database we store what was in the build route and what we got out of the build and we know where we put the files and we keep track of you know, everything that, to do with that build so that if we ever need to, we can reproduce the build. A scratch build, we do the build in a mock true and we put it in this directory called scratch and we leave it there and we don't bother tracking what was in the build root. It's only stored in the logs and we don't import the build information into the database. So it's, you know, it's essentially as if that build never happened because, so it's, it's a good way to do a quick test. Or, you know, is this change really right? You just do a scratch build, and oh yeah, it builds, and you can grab it, test it, yep, it works, and, and push it out. But, so a scratch build's just designed to be a temporary, I want to check if this thing does what it's supposed to do type thing, whereas an actual build, we store, we keep track of, and, um, you know, we and do that. Um, excuse me. This, yep. Unfortunately, this is the, all the time we have for this now. Um, okay. Yeah, we have to wrap up. So, um... Alright, so my build is still going and it's probably, hopefully it will actually complete. And now, yeah, let's just, so the only um, other things I had to quickly add is that MASH um, is a really good tool to actually get repositories that you can use out. And then you can, you know, it uses create repo to make the repos. And you could use something like RHM push to push to satellite to deploy your software. Um, and Koji list dash API lists the whole Python API that's available for you to extend and build upon Koji and do lots of cool things with it on top of it. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. I'm D Gilmore on Freenode, or you can email me at I'm D Gilmore at fedoraproject.org. Um, so, and that's it. Thank you. 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 Thank